Welcome to Joint Replacement Surgery Prep Seminar. My name is Crystal Price. I am the Joint Coordinator here at Park West Medical Center and I will be assisting you along your journey. We are so glad that you have decided to have your joint replacement here at Park West Medical Center. By reviewing this information, reading your joint replacement manual, and working alongside of our staff of trained professionals, you will obtain the information needed to ensure your success. Here you will find a brief detail of some of the significant information that will help you in your joint replacement process. If you have further questions after referring to your joint book, feel free to reach out to me. My contact information will be listed at the end of this class. Here are some of the important phone numbers that you may need. My information is located on the bottom. Here is a map of our facility. On day of surgery, you will need to enter through the surgery entrance. You may park in the designated visitor parking lots or you may use our valet free of charge. Once going through the door, you will turn to the left and check in at the volunteer station. If you are still needing to come for pre-admission testing, you will do so by entering the main entrance and checking in at registration to your right. On day of discharge, your loved one will need to pick you up at the discharge entrance. We strongly encourage that all of our joint replacement patients have a joint coach. You can ask a family member, a friend, a neighbor, or any responsible adult you know to assist you as your joint replacement coach. A joint coach will provide you with assistance throughout your joint replacement journey. We suggest that your coach come with you to all of your appointments. We encourage them to attend your pre-admission testing appointment to review the joint prep seminar in person or with you online, be present the day of surgery and post-operative days to follow. We ask that they be present for your therapy sessions and discharge instruction teachings. They should also be available when you return home for at least two weeks. Having a joint replacement coach will make your experience and recovery easier. We encourage you to ask a backup person to be available if your primary coach becomes unavailable to you, especially when you return home. You will find a checklist in your joint replacement book that will help you with home preparation. Your coach can help you with this by helping you pick up throw rugs, helping you maneuver your walker to see if there's any obstacles or furniture in your way, they can help you change your bed linen after your CHG treatment. They can help you with last minute shopping and other items. They can help you stay focused on your recovery. They can encourage you to do your daily exercises at home or drive you to physical therapy if needed. They will be available to assist you with activities of daily living like dressing, bathing, meals, shopping, driving, etc until you are able to do these successfully on your own. Preparation for surgery. These are the items that you need to bring with you to pre-admission testing. You need to bring a list of all of your current medications. This includes all and any prescriptions and over-the-counter meds that you take on a regular basis. Things like multivitamins, aspirin, Tylenol are included. You also want to bring your insurance cards and a photo ID. You will want to bring any updated advanced directives such as living will or durable power of attorney. Also, any copayment that may be required by your insurance. Pre-admission testing will instruct you on the use of chlorhexidine a CHG treatment that is used to prevent infection. 
You will be given handwritten instructions on the details of how to shower with this bottle. It is good for three showers. Please remember to follow the instructions accordingly and use a clean fresh towel for every shower. You will also not want to shave for at least 24 hours before your surgery. You do not want to take a chance of nicking your skin and allowing germs to enter in. It is also recommended that if you have not already done so, to please go ahead and buy some liquid soap to be used for your showers after your surgery. Constipation can be a common post-operative complication. Therefore, we ask that you begin taking a stool softener about a week before your surgery, unless your physician has indicated otherwise. By taking a stool softener morning and night, this will help decrease the risk of constipation. If you develop diarrhea, please stop taking the stool softener. If you have irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's disease, diverticulitis, colitis, gastritis, or any other abdominal issues, continue your normal regimen. Do not make changes or add a stool softener unless indicated by your physician. By increasing your water and electrolytes intake, as well as your fiber intake, this will also help prevent constipation. Some of you may be given a drink called Ensure Pre-Surgery. If given this drink, it will be given to you by pre-admission testing with handwritten instructions on what to do. This drink will help prevent post-operative nausea and vomiting and decrease your insulin resistance. If you are given this drink, please remember to not sip this drink. It is absorbed in the intestines within 30 minutes. Please drink this bottle as directed. To help prevent dehydration, nausea, vomiting, and low volume, we would like for you to drink eight ounces of electrolyte beverage the night before your surgery. These things are drinks such as Gatorade, Powerade, Smart Water, Propel, Pedialyte. We do ask that you do not drink any orange or red in these beverages. You may also have clear liquids approved up until four hours prior to your surgery time. Again, these are clear liquids. If you drink coffee, it must be black coffee and no creamer. If you drink something that is not on this list, you may have the potential of postponing your surgery or canceling altogether. Please remember to not eat anything after midnight. We're now going to hear from Katie from physical therapy and Lindsay from occupational therapy to go over your therapy processes. My name is Katie. I'm a physical therapist here at Park West. What you can expect from physical therapy is that we are going to help you get the strength flexibility, and endurance back so that you can return home safely after your surgery. Most often, we will work to get into your room on the day of your surgery in order to teach you some exercises and help you to start walking with the appropriate equipment. If we do not see you on the day of your surgery, we will catch you the first thing in the morning and your nurse may be the one to assist you out of the bed on the night of your surgery. I'm Lindsay. I'm an occupational therapist at Park West. When you go to occupational therapy in the hospital, we're going to be asking you a lot about your home environment and the obstacles that are to come once you leave the hospital. We will work on bathroom safety, including shower transfers, and we will also address how to get in and out of a car, and we will provide education to your caregivers to make sure you are as safe as possible when you leave the hospital. One of the items that we want you all to be looking for at home or asking neighbors for or churches for is a walker with two wheels on the front. 
The reason why we like this walker is because it does roll and allow you to get a more normal walking pattern, but it also allows you to stand within the walker so that you can use your arms to support yourself after surgery. We do not like to use the walkers with four wheels and the seats because they tend to be too slick immediately after surgery. If you do not have a walker already available to you, our case manager or our social worker will work with your insurance to try to get you this equipment before you discharge. When you do find this equipment, you want to size it up so that if your hands were at your sides, the handles would fall at the spot where you would wear a wristwatch. If you want us to help you size it up when you come to the hospital, you're welcome to bring it up to your room and we're happy to help you. If you are going to a skilled nursing facility when you leave the hospital, you will not be given a walker from the hospital and instead those things will be decided before you discharge to return to your home. Prior to your surgery, try to borrow as much medical equipment as you can because odds are you're not going to need it for very long. Wait to purchase items until recommended by your occupational therapist because we will try to tailor your equipment to your home environment. This slide shows frequently recommended pieces of equipment. The first two are for your commode. They, both of them make the seating surface higher and they provide armrest so you're able to push through your arms rather than your sore leg. At the bottom, you can see two types of shower chairs. One is called a tub transfer bench. This is used if you have a tub shower and have difficulty stepping over the tub wall. With the tub transfer bench, two legs come outside of the tub shower so that you're able to scoot across the wall rather than stepping over it. To the right, you can see a suction cup grab bar. These are used to provide stability, but they will not keep you from falling if you were to lose your balance. These do not work if you have a tile shower. They only work on fiberglass. We have pulled out some of the exercises that are already listed to you in your joint book under your purple pre-op tab. There are a handful of exercises there, but these are the ones we feel will be most important for you to practice before you come in for surgery. The first exercise we want you to try to do are ankle pumps. And to do ankle pumps, you simply just move your ankle up and down, up and down on both sides. The next exercise is the chair push-ups, and you want to make sure that you're seated in a chair without wheels and with armrests that extend to the end of the seat. When you sit at the edge of the chair and put your arms on the armrests, you want to use your arms to lift your body up from the chair and then back down. Try not to cheat by using your legs. The next exercise is a heel slide. You will want to lay down on your bed, on the couch, or in a recliner, and you will simply slide your heel along that surface to bend and straighten your knee and your hip. If this is too difficult, try putting a cookie sheet underneath your heel and that will allow you to slide more easily. The last exercise is knee extension. With this exercise, you want to kick your leg up as straight as you can and then lower it back down to the ground as slowly as you can. What to bring with you on day of surgery? We ask that you bring at least two sets of loose fitting clothes. This is a wellness program and we would like to get you back to your independent daily living as soon as possible. So we will be ambulating you in your everyday clothes. We ask that if you bring capri pants, that they are stretchable, that they will go above your knee. Otherwise, they could impede your flexion. You're able to bring pajamas or you can wear a gown of ours. Tennis shoes are preferred. Shoes with backs and rubber soles are suggested. Try to get a pair of shoes one size up or shoes that you have wiggle room in. Please, no flip-flops or sandals as this can be a trip hazard. You are able to bring your personal hygiene items if you would like. A list of your current medications and updated living will power of attorney if indicated. These are to keep you safe and to make sure we have the most up-to-date list. If you have sleep apnea, 
and have a CPAP machine, please bring this with you on day of surgery. You may leave this in the car and then your loved one may get it once you're in recovery room. Also, bring your joint replacement notebook. This is a great place to put items once you're given papers from case management, physical therapy, or the nursing staff. Remember, the hospital is not responsible for any personal belongings brought into the hospital. What should I expect after surgery? On day of surgery, you will either work with our therapy or nursing staff to get out of the bed to the chair and ambulate. If you are still here on post-op day one, staff will begin assisting you to get out of the bed around five or six o'clock in the morning. Your bed linens will be removed and will not be replaced until after lunch. Physical and occupational therapy will work with you as ordered. After evaluation, therapy will recommend any additional equipment you may need for home use. You will sit in the recliner until around 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon after your evening session of therapy. However, we do ask that you get back up for your meals. This is part of what we call eye cough. I is for incentive spirometer. C is cough and deep breathe. O is for oral care. U is for understanding that you understand these things will help prevent postoperative complications. G, get out of bed. And H, to keep your head of the bed elevated. So this is why we ask that you sit in recliner most of the day. It will also help you to return quickly to your independent daily living. A member of our team will be checking on you every one to two hours while you are hospitalized. We do ask, if you need to get up out of bed or the chair for any reason, you must call for your assistance. For your safety, please call, don't fall. We ask that your family members or visitors do not assist you with getting out of the bed or the chair for any reason. Your pain management is important to us. Our staff will do everything we can to help make you more comfortable and your pain tolerable. It is recommended that you take your pain meds consistently for the first couple of days. You must call for your pain medication. Typically, pain medications are not scheduled. Please call five to 10 minutes before pain medications are due to allow the nurses time to get medication to your room. The nurse will ask you frequently what your pain level is on a scale of 0 to 10. 0 obviously being no pain and 10 being the worst pain you've ever felt in your life. Do not wait until your pain is unbearable to request your pain medication. It is best to take pain meds prior to therapy if available. In order to keep you safe, pain medication may not be given if your blood pressure is too low you are too sedated, or if you have any other medical reason for it to be held. All of our total replacement surgeries will utilize some type of ice therapy. Most of our knee surgeries will use the blue cooling device. This is plugged in with an AC adapter. The blue pad will go on to the knee. Please remember when at home, to place a barrier, like a pillowcase, between your knee and this knee pad. This will help prevent freezer burn on your skin. This machine is filled with water and ice. At home, if you do not like using the ice, you may also use frozen water bottles. Ask your discharge nurse for more information. Also, when using this blue machine, make sure that the two metal clips attaching the two tubes together are fully engaged. Otherwise, it may leak. If you have issues with this machine, once you are discharged, there is a toll-free number located on the top of the lid. Our hip replacement surgeries will have ice packs. 
you will either have the white ice pack that is refillable with ice, or at home, you may have the ice packs that you can place in the freezer and refreeze. All of these ice therapies will be given full instructions at discharge for more information. What's going to happen at discharge? Most dressings that are used at discharge are called Amepilex. This is a silver nitrate dressing. The silver nitrate helps prevent infection. It also has a wicking material that helps decrease drainage away from the incision site. It is water resistant and you may take a shower as directed. Do not take any tub baths or soaking the incision. This dressing typically stays on for seven days unless instructed otherwise. At discharge, our flow coordinator will educate you on the dressing you have as well as your closure at discharge. We ask that if possible, your joint coach be in attendance for these instructions. One of the questions we get asked most is, what do I need to do to go home? Well, the first thing is we need to have a physician's order. If you have discussed with your physician going home same day, please let your nurse know this on arrival to the unit. You may need to be cleared by internal medicine if your physician has ordered a hospitalist to see you. You will need to be cleared by physical therapy and occupational therapy. You must be able to eat, drink, and empty your bladder without difficulty. Therapy and or skilled facility arrangements need to be arranged. We actually ask that you do these prior to you coming to the hospital. It is our goal for all patients to be discharged home without patient therapy. However, if you have discussed with your physician and the preference is to go to skilled facility, please know the facility that you would like to go to upon arrival to the hospital. It is highly encouraged that you prearrange with this facility. Please note that not everyone that arranges for a skilled facility will be able to attend based on post-operative criteria. We ask that everyone make a plan B. If your plan is to go home with Home Health, we ask that you know what Home Health company that you would like to use. If your plan is to go with outpatient therapy, we ask that you go ahead and set up this appointment. You can call the physical therapy of your choice, let them know that you will be having surgery, and set up a post-op appointment. Then, on day of surgery or day after, a case manager will see you and will call them and give them the details. If you are unable to set up these items preoperatively before your surgery, our case managers will help you with these tasks. Follow-up appointments need to be obtained and any equipment ordered and received. What should you expect at home? Most of the time, your physician will allow you to sleep in any position that you are comfortable in. Do not leave your knee bent for prolonged periods of time. Knee patients should not put anything directly behind the knee unless instructed by the physician to do so. Continue stool softeners and laxatives as needed. Continue to use your insemnospirometer for two weeks after surgery. Remember doing this 10 times per hour. Do not do all 10 at once. On days you do not have therapy, continue your exercises two to three times a day. Take pain meds 30 minutes to an hour before therapy. Make sure not to submerge your incision in water, such as pools, hot tubs, jacuzzis, lakes, etc. Only take showers. No driving until approved by your surgeon. Make sure you have someone to take you home after your surgery. Do not take any medications that you have not discussed with your physician. Typically, meds like ibuprofen, Motrin, Aleve, Advil, etc. should be held. Some physicians may instruct you to take Tylenol. 
do not take more than 4,000 milligrams of Tylenol in a 24-hour period. Again, all of this information will be covered in your discharge instructions. As a reminder, constipation can be a post-operative complication. In order to prevent this, continue to taking your stool softeners. Also, if needed, you may need to add a mild laxative. Speak with your physician for further information. Here are some times you might want to call your physician. If you are having consistent fevers not relieved by your Valdine that are above 101 to 101.5. If you have continued drainage after seven days or if you have any pus drainage or foul smelling odor drainage, these could be signs of an infection. Pain increased or not controlled by pain medications. The inability to bear weight on your surgical leg or new onset of swelling that doesn't respond to ice and elevation. These could all be signs of a potential blood clot. Please remember to do your ankle pumps. Also, with the pain increasing, keep in mind that on day three is your peak. This is a normal process and you will have more pain on this date, but it will slowly trend down. If your foot has no sensation or discolored appearance, make sure to notify your physician immediately. If you have new onset of confusion or disorientation, make sure to contact your physician as this could be in a sign of infection or could be a side effect from your pain medication. Although very rare, patients sometimes can have what we call a pulmonary embolism, a blood clot that has traveled to your chest. If you have any shortness of breath or chest pain, make sure to call 911. Please note, you will have mild bruising that will be above, around, and below your incision site. It will increase over the next two weeks, then subside. This is not a reason to call your physician. If you have further questions, feel free to reach out to me Crystal Price, the Joint Coordinator. My phone number is 865-373-0091. Or, if you prefer, you may reach me via email, cprice1 at covhlth.com. Again, thank you for choosing Park West Medical Center for your health care needs. It is our privilege to care for you, and we look forward to seeing you soon.